Zephaniah chapter 3 Sing, daughter Zion, shout aloud, Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. I will remove from you all who mourn over the loss of your appointed festivals, which is a burden and reproach for you. At that time I will deal with all who oppressed you. I will rescue the lame. I will gather the exiles. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they have suffered shame. At that time I will gather you. At that time I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord. Luke chapter 24 Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. Welcome, friends, today. Um, I've entitled this uh, talk, um, Handy Hints for Renewing Open Dark Times. 
And um, this is really brought to you by Captain Tom Moore, the prophet Zephaniah from 600 BC, um, but both with a little more interpretation from um, myself, Veronica Haley. Captain Tom Moore probably needs little introduction to us all. Uh, he turns 100 on April the 30th and he's raised millions of pounds for the NHS's battle against the scourge of coronavirus. He's done this by walking 100 laps of his garden with his frame. Captain Moore's daughter, Hannah, describes him as a typical Yorkshireman, very stoic and controlled, taking everything in his side, including, seemingly, our current pandemic crisis. And his story captures us, I think, because of his determination to do something, to make a difference, to give us all hope. It's one man's fight against despair. It's a demonstration in the believing in the power of an individual to make the world a better place. Uh, and I find it myself very, very inspirational. Unlike Captain Tom Moore, I think it is understandable that at times like this, we can fail to find hope on occasions. Our inner cynic may always be warning us against the danger of hope. It may tell us that we've hoped before only to see our expectations crushed. For some people, being cynical or being jaded, uh, preferring despair rather than hope, is in a way a safer option. Then they think, oh gosh, well, you know, I'll focus on everything that's bad because then I won't be disappointed if I hope for better times. But in fact, if we fall into that valley of despair, then we lose sight of the longer vision and certainly the bigger vision that God has for us in this world and the, the bigger hope that lies before us um, at the end of this crisis. Today's Old Testament reading is taken from Zephaniah chapter 3 verses 14 to the end and honestly I promise you thumb the pages of the average Bible too quickly and you'll miss this prophet. He was a prophet of very very few words, very few chapters but he prophesied just before 600 BC um, uh, and whilst much of what he talked about was about the day of judgment he was warning the people of Judah, uh, what would happen if they did not adhere to God's commandments. Um, his uh, prophecy ends with this wonderful reading uh, that we hear today, which is all about hope and rejoicing with God. Um, and uh, Zephaniah understands that the people of Judah are going to go through difficult times and in fact they go into exile in 586 BC um, but he not only points them to a future that is bright and joyous with God but he also gives them some handy hints for how to survive hard times. So what are Zephaniah's handy hints for surviving hard and dark times? Well, first of all, funnily enough, he starts off with the power of song. Um, Zephaniah's first sally against the pessimism of the jaded or the fearful is a call to sing. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. He calls the people of God to look past the troubles this life brings to them and see the future. And singing can be a full expression of joy and also a source of strength and enormous fortitude. My intimate knowledge of many of the hymns in the old hymn book, Ancient and Modern, comes in part, yes, from school assemblies, yes, in part from attending church as a child, but also in part because I really remember that my mother used to sing hymns to herself at home, particularly in the mornings. She didn't do this in front of an altar, nor did she sing along to Radio 4's morning service. No, she did this for an entirely different reason. Because for a female of her time, and she was born in 1917, um, my mother was a highly educated professional woman who married quite late in life for women of those days. 
and who then found the labours of housework um, really not to her liking. Um, so as she advanced around the house each day, accompanying Mrs Smith, our daily help, with the household chores, my mother would belt out classics like Fight the Good Fight or Thine Forever God of Love or the um, uh, various other things, Peeling the Potatoes, she'd sing, you know, He who would valiant be against all disaster, let him in constancy follow the master. And my mother really sang to seek strength, to seek persistence, to seek perseverance. And so Zephaniah also talks of singing for joy in these dark times. And I think we can also think about singing for strength. One of the wonderful things about not being in church together is that you can all sing along to these wonderful hymns at home that are included in this service. Belt them out. Nobody's going to know whether you're singing sharp or flat. And sing, as Zephaniah commanded the Israelites, sing for joy, sing for strength. And in fact, in this reading, really unusually, Zephaniah prophesies that God will sing with us. It's one of the few times in the Bible where it's talked about that God will sing with us and God will sing because of his joy for us. And the second handy hint that Zephaniah has it for us is that during times of despair, to feel the power of gladness and gratitude, um, he says that Jerusalem is invited to be glad and rejoice with all your heart. And he invites the people to mirror God's attitude, which is one of gladness. He will rejoice over you with gladness. And of course, one of the curious questions I've been asked by many during this lockdown is what sort of lockdown are you having? And whilst I find my mood can change, um, really on the turn of a penny, um, I've also found much joy in this new world order. Whilst family must remain physically distant, in some ways, family and friends have never seemed more important or closer than now, as we all experience solace um, in, and comfort from this emotion of extreme vulnerability. I'm making time to connect with old cousins and being much more mindful of those who are on their own at this time. Um, I'm very patient and uh, grateful for their presence in our lives. I'm connecting with my grandchildren in a different way, um, corresponding with them by post, talking about the books that they're reading. And whilst I can't see them in person, in some ways I'm getting to know them in different ways, and I'm truly grateful for that. The third thing that Zephaniah uh, counsels us to know is that God is with us. Zephaniah recognises that exile, quarantine and indeed lockdown can breed cynicism, cynicism and despair born out of loneliness. But he reminds the people of uh, Jerusalem and of Israel that they can constantly reach out and find God's presence. He tells us that the King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. The Lord your God is in your midst. God is not bothered whether we're able to meet in a building called a church or not. His presence is amongst us as we go about our daily lives. And his, our, his connectivity with us and our connectivity with him is much more dependent on us living out his commandments. And our connectivity with others is about living out our commandments through others and with others at this difficult time. His being in our midst means that we are not alone. And I know that our hope for better times will be actually fulfilled. The declarations of my relationship with God are certainly changed because I can't go to worship in a church, but I found the foundations of my faith in God are not shaken. And in some ways they've been strengthened I found my walks along the skyline with my dog have this year been almost beautiful. I've been much more aware of the blossom, the birds, the butterflies as they've arrived. And I've been much more mindful of the wonder of the natural beauty of this world, God's world, in which we are guests of God 
and of this planet. We are not masters, but we are guests of this planet. And uh, I know that God is in that wondrous world, and I don't have to be in church to be aware or to know that he is with us at this time. And lastly, Zephaniah's message is one about not fearing. His message is meant to be an antidote to fear. His message is very clear, do not fear. And just like the angel who appeared to Joseph and Mary, just like Jesus appearing in the New Testament reading that we've heard today, Jesus appearing to the disciples on the road to Emmaus and telling them not to be afraid that he is still with them, uh, that the resurrection is true and he is still with us. I say to you today, anxiety, worry and fear can lead us in the wrong direction. If we're not careful, they deceive us and they rob us of our faith. The people of Judea faced very frightening times in 600 BC. We are certainly living through serious difficult times and I'm not underestimating the crisis that we are in. But we should concentrate on the sources of hope. We have a wonderful, wonderful health service and we have some fantastic scientific research in this country which is based on centuries of academic research and knowledge. And all of this is being brought to bear on this crisis at this moment. So we have so much to be helpful for. And I counsel all of you, do not be afraid. At the end of Zephaniah's reading, he says that God will be with us at the end of all of this. And we will come together and we will share in rejoicing in St Matt's, in St Thomas's, in whatever way our rejoicing takes. So there are multiple themes within this short reading which resonate so strongly with our lives right now. And Zephaniah's themes and messages are about the joy of singing, the power of gladness and gratitude, the certainty of God being with us, and his overarching message for us at this time is do not fear. And let's now turn back to our friend and hero of the moment, Captain Tom Moore. And what we find is that, curiously, Captain Tom Moore's messages for us all at this time are the same as Zephaniah's messages were in 600 BC, two and a half thousand years ago. Because when interviewed, Captain Moore said this, for all those people who are finding it difficult at the moment, the sun will shine again and the clouds will go away. You've all got to remember that we will get through it in the end. It will be all right. It might take time. At the end of the day, we shall be okay again. And just like Zephaniah implored the people of Judea to sing and to rejoice, Captain Moore is recording a song with Michael Ball which is that you will never walk again alone and that we will meet again. So friends, we will all meet in St Thomas's and St Matt's. And until then, sing aloud today, wherever you are. Be joyous in your melodies. Be glad for all that we can enjoy, even in lockdown. And know that God is with you. Therefore, do not be afraid. All things must pass. Instead, work hard to stay safe protect those around you and work to support those who work to protect others. Amen. Thank you for reading or listening. Goodbye. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Father, we pray for all Christians across the world engaged in worship today. Those worshipping on their own, those worshipping in family groups, and those using social media to connect with others in worship, nationally or internationally. May all feel supported and strengthened by the light of your presence in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those in positions of authority with all the responsibility that entails. We pray for a deeper understanding and tolerance between nations so they can draw near in a spirit of friendship, working together not only to help overcome the current challenges we face, but in the interests of a better world where love and peace reign supreme. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our local community. In particular, we pray for all key workers putting their lives on the line to help others in need. Watch over them, Lord. Give them the courage and resilience to respond to their calling whilst remaining safe. And may your living spirit envelop and sustain them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all who are ill, for those recovering from surgery, and for the many who depend on others for life and movement. We pray also for those prevented at this time from being with loved ones in hospital, unable to be there should they pass from this world to the next, and those unable to be at the graveside of a friend. May your healing power, Lord, bring comfort to them in their distress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us finish with a prayer of thanks to our Lord, entitled Tapestry. Dear Lord, we praise and thank you for the life you've given us here, for our homes and work and leisure, for our friends, our near and dear. We thank you for the gifts that you have given us to share. We praise you for the beauty that surrounds us everywhere. And though we never find this such an easy thing to do, we praise you for the sad times and the difficulties too. For even when things happen that we cannot understand, we know the pattern of our lives is woven by your hand. So help us, loving Father, never, never to complain if among the strands of colour there are darker shades of pain. We only see a few loose threads. You see the whole design. So we praise you and we thank you for our tapestry divine. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>